What's up everybody, how's it going? In this video, I want to give you some tips on how you can better deal with code reviews as a software engineer, both on the side of submitting code for code review and on the side of giving code reviews, actually reviewing other people's code. Because code reviews are a central part of software engineering. If you're a software engineer, you have to take part in the whole code review process. And believe it or not, there is some sort of unspoken code review etiquette that you can follow that will improve the process as a whole. So specifically in this video, I'm going to give you three tips for when you're sending code for code review and three tips for when you're reviewing other people's code. But before we jump into those tips, I do want to preface them by just saying that these are merely my opinions. Do not take these as objective facts. These are just things that I have accumulated throughout my experience as a software engineer at Google, at Facebook, on Algo Expert. By the way, if you're preparing for coding interviews or your systems design interviews, then do check out my company, Algo Expert. Go to Algo Expert and use the promo code CLEM, C-L-E-M, for a discount on the platform. But so please keep in mind that these are a bit more subjective than objective. Now, in order to really internalize these tips and why they're useful, we have to make sure that we're on the same page about why code reviews exist in the first place. And the reason they exist is very simple. They exist to improve the software development life cycle. They exist to improve the software and the code that you, the software engineer, are writing. How? By adding a layer to the software development life cycle, during which one of your coworkers can catch bugs in your code that you might not have caught, can catch improvements in your code that could be made to make the code more maintainable, more scalable, catch you know, style guidelines that could have been better followed. So the point is, the code review process is really there just to serve you and your team to write better code and better software. It is a win-win situation for everybody. It should not be thought of as some sort of assignment or test that you're passing. No, if that's the mentality that you have, then you're already starting on the wrong foot and the tips that I'm about to give you might not really make sense. So throw any mentality like that that you might have and realize that a code review serves you and your entire team and it's a win-win for everybody. Now, that being said, the code review process does add this extra layer to your work. It basically gives you, the software engineer, more work to do and kind of slows you down. So your goal as someone who's interacting with this code review process should be to make the process as frictionless and as seamless as possible and to make it as conducive to achieving its own goal. In other words, if the goal of a code review is for your code reviewers to catch potential bugs that you have or things like that, then you want to make sure that the code review process actually accomplishes this goal. Okay, so keeping all that in mind, making the process frictionless, making the process actually achieve its goal, keeping that in mind, let's dive into the three tips that you should follow when you are submitting code for code review. Tip number one, I've said this one many times in the past and I'll say it again, you want to keep the amount of code that you send up for code review in a single chunk, right, in one pull request or one change list, you want to keep it as small as possible. You do not want to send, ideally, if possible, a thousand lines of code up for code review at once. That is just a recipe for disaster. It's terrible as a code reviewer to receive a pull request that has a thousand lines of code. It's super hard to review. It takes a lot of time. It's much harder to catch bugs. So the whole point of a pull request or of a code review suddenly is kind of inhibited. So you really want to do your best possible to reduce the lines of code that you send in a single pull request for code review. So that often means putting a little bit more work yourself as the software engineer to really divide up your pull requests or you know, your, your code that you're sending for code review, really limiting it to kind of isolated pieces of logic, and that'll go a long way. The rule of thumb is that the best type of pull request is a pull request that is anywhere between 10 and 100 lines of code. Past 100 lines of code, it starts to really become a burden to the code reviewer, and it starts to be really much more difficult to actually catch bugs and to leave useful feedback. 
The second tip when you're sending code up for code review is to leave a good description on it. You want to give context to the person or to the people who are going to be reviewing your code. Because remember, at best, the people who are going to be reviewing your code are going to have some context about what it is that you're writing in your code. And at worst, they're going to have no context whatsoever. For example, if they're on a completely different team at a big company, or you know, if it's someone who's completely new to the team, those people will just have no idea what you wrote. It's going to be all new for them. And so giving them some context, and even people who are on your team and familiar with the code base, giving them context of what it is that you're solving in this pull request, or in this code is going to go a long way. Of course, sometimes the description can be as simple as setting up the pages for this new feature. But other times, let's say you're fixing a pretty complicated or nuanced bug, you might want to describe the bug that you're fixing. Maybe you point to a customer ticket that was sent, or maybe you point to a link that tracks the bug internally with whatever project management software you use. Or if you're doing a front-end feature and your change is very visual, then you might want to add a screenshot of the before and after. Or for example, if your pull request, your code was automatically generated by some sort of command or script, it can be a really good best practice, so to speak, to actually copy paste the command that you ran that generated this code in the pull request description. That way, when someone is reviewing it, they don't have to really wonder like, how did this code just randomly appear? Oh, okay, they used this command and I can go look at the documentation for this command if I wanna better understand how the code got generated. So always leave good descriptions that give good context for the code that you just sent for review. And finally, tip number three, this one has to do with when in your code that you're sending for code review, you have part of the diff, right? Part of the difference between the code that you wrote and the actual code that, that is in the main repository, when part of the diff isn't really related to the main logic in your code, in your pull request, but was necessary in that pull request for whatever reason, it can be good to leave a comment addressed to your code reviewer just to let them know why this is in this pull request in the first place. So just to, to clarify, this is not something where you want to leave a comment in the actual code, but it's a comment that you want to leave for your code reviewer like, oh, hey, the reason I had to change this here, it might not be obvious, but it's because there was a typing issue and I'm just fixing it here. Just giving a random example. So if there's something in your pull request that isn't super obvious, it's not super clear to someone who isn't you why this piece of code was changed in this pull request, leave a preemptive comment telling your code reviewer why it's there. Trust me, that goes a long way. Okay, so now let's shift gears and talk about some tips for when you are reviewing code. So the first tip, this is also one that I've said many times before, including in my recent video about how to communicate better as a software engineer. I'll put the link to that one in the description below. But you want to make sure that when you are leaving comments, review comments in your code review, that you are as clear and explicit and that you over communicate as possible. Because the worst thing that you can do in a code review is leave comments that are unclear to the receiver, the person who wrote the code, and that leaves them kind of in limbo where they don't know what to do. So when I say here to be clear, there are many ways that you can be clear, right? It might be that you're suggesting that they make a change and you want to just really make sure that they understand what the change that you're requesting is. Or perhaps it might mean that you don't really feel strongly about a comment that you left and you want to make sure that they know that. So for example, I often leave comments in my PRs or in my code reviews, sorry, that are just suggestions, but it's not really like, I don't really care if they address them. I'm like, hey, I think it could be better like this. But so then I'll add a comment where I say, I don't really feel strongly about this though. Use your judgment and you decide. That lets the person who wrote the code know that if they happen to disagree with this, they won't really be in this limbo state where they're like, is that person going to be mad if I don't, you know, if I ignore their request? No, because now they see that I'm okay with it, right? Or another type of clarity that you can put in a comment is you can say something like, hey, you know, sanity check, is this what you meant to do here? Or is this why you're doing this here? And then you can add one more comment that says, 
By the way, this is not actionable. I'm just asking for clarity. Just to, again, be overwhelmingly clear to the person that you're doing a code review for so that they know what your intentions were and they don't feel blocked afterwards. And this especially goes a long way when you're working with a remote team, when you're working with people in different time zones or in people across teams that you might not know super well, like and be able to, you know, ping them immediately or talk to them in person to clarify ambiguity. It really goes a long way. Tip number two, for this one, you're really gonna have to talk to your team, to your teammates, and establish a process, a set of rules for your code reviews, but it has to do with when to approve or when to not approve a pull request. So what I mean by this is when someone sends a pull request and you're reviewing it, you can leave a bunch of comments, but then at the end, you can either approve the pull request, which is gonna allow the person to actually merge the code even after they've addressed the comments in the main repository, or you can not approve the pull request, or you can even sometimes explicitly like reject it. And here, like I said, you have to talk to your team to know what your rules or standards are for when to approve or disapprove a pull request, because there's nothing more, like, I don't know if disrespectful is the right word, but it's, it's a bad feeling when you send code for review, your code reviewer responds with a few comments and they might even seem like, you know, kind of small comments, stylistic comments, but they don't approve your code review. And unless you had an explicit standard and a reason for which not to approve that code review, it's a little bit like, you know, th this person just like try to block me? Like, are they purposely trying to slow me down? It's just a really not fun experience. And so very important, just talk to your team to, to share with you what we do on Algo Expert or what we did at Google on my team when we had built a lot of trust, you know, amongst us, the teammates is we were very explicit that most pull requests, we would approve them even if we had a decent amount of comments because we trusted that our teammates would address the comments and we had good communication for what comments we thought were really important to address, which ones would be just like, oh, use your judgment, but I don't feel strongly about this. And that's that. But then the one rule that we had or that we currently have on Algo Expert is if there is a pull request that has like a really bad bug, the kind of bug that like under no circumstance do you want it to be in production, then you'll reject the pull request or you won't approve it at least. And here, like, you know, you just make it clear, oh yeah, the reason I didn't accept this was because like for safety, we don't want this to be merged. But otherwise, I trust you enough to address my comments, to respect my comments, or at least, you know, to ask me if you really disagree with them or whatever, and I will preemptively approve your pull request. So just make sure to establish these standards with your team and all will be good. Finally, tip number three for when you're reviewing code. This one has to do kind of with the first tip. It's basically knowing when to take something offline rather than to keep it in a, pull in a pull request comment or code review comment. Sometimes you're reviewing code and there needs to be a bigger conversation. Maybe the code just, you know, for whatever reason needs to be completely rewritten. It's gonna take a bit more effort. And instead of wasting time, leaving some huge paragraph, you know, written paragraph, or leaving a comment that the person will then respond to and that then you'll respond to again or whatever, it's better to just, you know, give a little nudge to your teammate in person or, you know, by um, instant messaging if you're remote and to just have the conversation offline. You can even leave a comment on the pull request saying like, hey, I think we should discuss this further. I'll ping you offline or something like that. And you know, take things in a more direct, uh, you know, communications channel rather than in a pull request. It'll save you a ton of time and it's just better. Now, as a final bonus tip that I wanna give you for when you are responding to code review comments, very important, if for whatever reason there is a code review comment that you disregard, you do not take action on it, and the comment didn't clearly say something along the lines of use your judgment, right? it's really, really nice and helpful and respectful to answer the comment and to explain why you disagree with it or why you decided not to listen to it. Because otherwise, as the code reviewer, there's nothing worse than when you see someone who's merged their pull request and you just go look out of curiosity and you're like, oh, I left three comments and they ignored all three 
and they didn't say why they ignored it. It just really like BM, right, bad manners, and it just goes a long way, again, to communicate and to explain why you're doing what you're doing. So that's gonna be it for all my code review tips. This has been a code review etiquette session with Clement. I just butchered my name completely with Clement. Hopefully you found these tips helpful. Let me know what you think about them in the comments below. Please smash the like button if you haven't already. It helps with the video and the channel a lot. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Twitter and LinkedIn. I'm posting every single day on Twitter or almost every single day. LinkedIn I post like twice a week. You don't wanna miss all the gems that I post on there. Follow me on Instagram if you like pictures and otherwise I will see you in the next video.